Fuel is the one commodity that makes everything we do possible. From travel to power generation, fuel is liquid gold. And even more so on the black market, where it is hard to trace and quick to sell. But in a brazen and lucrative new crime trend, criminals target fuel pipelines across the country. Masa Kakana gets the inside track on this crime that can incur up to 30-year sentences for the suspects. Fuel is like liquid gold on the black market. We have exposed many methods used by criminal syndicates over the years, from diesel skimming to hijacking petrol tankers and robbing petrol depots. Criminals now target fuel pipelines. They're buried at least two meters underground. It's more labor intensive, but the rewards are worth the effort. Millions of liters of fuel are stolen at any given time, on any given week, uh, at any given point from which the pipeline runs. This is a priority crime for the criminal justice system. Fuel is a crucial commodity, and the pipelines are essential infrastructure, explains advocate Andrea Johnson from the NPA. And so it has a ripple effect. Um, so it doesn't just affect the economy, it will affect society. Um, and I think in the long run, it will affect our ability to sustain ourselves in terms of the functions we need to perform using fuel. Every week, Transnet Pipelines delivers 250 million liters of fuel. That's the equivalent of a thousand petrol tankers on the road every day. The network of over 3,800 kilometers of pipelines covers five provinces. One of these lines runs through farm manager J.P. Morkel's operation in Pumalanga. He was shocked when he stumbled across this scene earlier in the year. So when you come out, is it just like overflowing and just spilling and spilling yes. and spilling? <laughs> it was basically uh, what you call it, uh, a bottle butt. It was almost as if you um, took your shovel and hit one of your uh, water pipes by our house, that the water just starts spraying and spraying, I think at 10 to 20 times the pressure. The thieves dug a two by two meter hole by hand in the middle of cornfields under the cover of darkness. There's clearly marked tracks where they drove actually over our corn that was planted and that was already standing um, on, on the field uh, where they just came in. Uh, there was smaller tracks. Um, but it was definitely uh, a link truck um, that you could see. In recent months, JP knows of at least three other incidents in the area. Most of the farm owners had no knowledge of the pipeline's existence. We took to the sky to get a better understanding of the challenges in detecting this crime trend that is largely carried out in very remote areas. These pipes aren't visible to the naked eye, so they must be working with insiders to get information. They will recruit anybody. They've got the money on their side that they can throw around. Val de Val's private security company has investigated some of these cases. He says budgets for bribes are not an issue for these thieves. If you think of getting the fuel for 10 rand, 50, 11 rand, a truck takes 40,000 uh, litres, that's 420,000 a truck. We had instances where they came with six uh, bowsers in one night. Imagine uh, the money that they can play with. This is an informant. He was recruited by one of the pipeline theft syndicates. He says paying bribes to ensure successful hits was part of their modus operandi. They were saying if they have money, there is nothing can stop them. Depending on your position, just one day you get 40,000, 40, uh, some of them 20, some hundreds. They would come in gangs of 10 to 15 people to steal, armed with tools, muscle and expertise. That parties have everything. I have spanners to open the elves, uh, pipes, and those guys know how to feed the pipes into the valve. Uh, there are people that have experience with this thing. By this stage, insiders would have pointed out the location. Others would have been paid off to look the other way so that the guys in the know get on the job, while the lookouts keep guard until the tankers are ready to load. They've worked relatively under the radar for a very long time. These criminals work on the basis of what happens in the dark stays in the dark. And if it goes according to plan, it's a good payday. If the payday is it, it, right, maybe it's going to take two hours for the truck. Those big trucks, just two hours. And then they bring another truck, just two hours. Maybe they're going to work for the whole night. Easy job and big money. Mm. 
and this is pure greed because it is clean money in the making. You steal the fuel from the pipeline. There is no middleman per se. It goes straight into a market. That market doesn't pay the levies that um, government puts on fuel um, in its various forms and shapes. So it's a clean profit. Once you've got rid of it and it's uh, in the fuel tanks, and it disappears. You can't footprint it. It's gone. Because it's difficult to trace, the fuel gets sold quickly on the black market at discounted rates, either going to dodgy depots, petrol stations, or large-scale consumers of fuel like transporters. In the last financial year, there were 143 theft incidents on the pipeline network. From April this year, there have been a further 92 hits in just seven months. More than 16 million litres of fuel has been lost as a result of this crime trend. And that's not taking the other expenses and consequences into account. Sarit Knutzer is from Transnet's pipeline division. Anything that goes wrong with a, with a tampering incident could result in either the death of some community members, fires or contamination. In December 2019, a tanker caught a light during an attempted theft in Alberton, south of Joburg. These clips are from the scene. The threat that it is for the residents living near our pipeline, our pipeline traverses people's backyard, close to communities. Due to the theft of the incidents, the risk to the communities are increasing. It might take a couple of days to do the research, a couple of days to do the digging, and a couple of hours to steal the diesel. But to fix this will take months, if not years, because of the ecological damage. The thieves are taking more than just the pipeline, you know, they're destroying our natural assets. Conservationist Dr. Ruli Kloppers met us in the Durban Bay area just a week after a crude oil spill into the Umbilo River. This was the result of an attempted theft on a pipeline. If you look here, you'll see up, up to how high the oil has come onto these plants, yeah? What is the environmental impact of a spill like this? It's, it's all disastrous, right? It's all poison. It, it doesn't belong in those ecosystems. It goes through into those food chains um, and everything that feeds all those, those things. Long-term rehabilitation efforts will be necessary to properly restore the area. Knutso assures us Transnet are on board. We have various subject experts on board, um, aquatic experts, environmental experts, that will give us a um, specialised plan per zone down the river to address the specific sensitivities of the environment. In JP's case, the diesel spill on the two hectares of farming land will undoubtedly impact on future crops. Talks about the compensation uh, from Transnet has been there. Um, but as far as I'm aware, no compensation has come into our accounts as of yet. According to Knutzer, Transnet's insurance company is dealing with the claim. While the collateral ecological and economic damage is undeniable, it doesn't appear to concern the thieves in the slightest. We're losing millions and millions of rands. Mm. It's the only thing that they think about is their pockets. But they should be thinking about the very real jail sentences they could face if convicted. This is not a petty crime. This is essential infrastructure-related crime that lends itself to sabotage, explains Advocate Johnson. If successfully prosecuted in terms of the Criminal Matters Amendment Act adopted in 2016, criminals found guilty of tampering, damaging or stealing essential infrastructure can get as much as 30 years direct imprisonment. That is more than murder. Andrew, do you think criminals even realize that this crime could carry a hefty sentence? When you look at the ripple effect in terms of the economy, one thinks that if you just steal 50,000 litres of fuel, it's a drop in the ocean compared to what the country actually requires. But count those drops every day for a month, and we've lost a lot. So getting them off the street and giving them that kind of sentence really does match the crime. The Criminal Matters Amendment Act also allows for insiders to be dealt with decisively. Section 2 allows for charges of collusion by. We'd be able to apply the Criminal Matters Amendment Act and they face similar sentences as well. The biggest challenge at the moment is catching them in the act. With criminals constantly evolving, security companies have to use state-of-the-art technology to stay a step ahead. That's an eye in the sky, pitch darkness, they don't hear, they don't see. 50 meters you won't see or hear it. That's the beauty of it. You can watch 
yes. without being detected and catch them on the act so we can get that information to take to court for successful conviction. Collaborative investigations run by private security, police and prosecutors are tapping into networks of informants, incorporating suspect profiling and utilising high-tech surveillance equipment to catch these criminals. Technology is a very important component to gather that court-related evidence. Otherwise, you catch them and it's a catch and release. To date, the joint efforts have secured 110 arrests, with a number of vehicles, tankers and equipment impounded, but more can be done. As every South African, we should be worried when we are unable to access fuel, simply because the fuel is being stolen in the quantities that it's being stolen. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.